I'm on board Norwegian Bliss, and I've been on board for about a week and a half now. One thing became very clear practically from day one, and that is that this is a fantastic cruise ship, one of the best I've ever been on, and one I can very highly recommend to you. I want to take you through step-by-step step some of the great things about the Norwegian Bliss. One of the most brilliant things they did in designing this ship was adding a huge observation lounge up at the front end. We spent a lot of time here in the observation lounge, enjoying the views and having drinks at the bar. Because this area is fully enclosed, it didn't matter if it was hot outside or windy, it was always comfortable in the observation lounge. And I really love the way they outfitted this lounge with a variety of furniture, everything from chairs to couches to these little day beds. With the ship positioned in Alaska during the summers, this is going to be a fantastic spot for viewing the beauty of Alaska without being exposed to the weather. Here's a picture of my family when we visited Alaska a few years ago on a different cruise ship. Notice how bundled up we were. The observation lounge is going to be perfect for viewing the scenery in Alaska, no matter what the weather does. But even on our cruise in the Caribbean and through the Panama Canal and up the west coast of Central America, we spent a lot of time in the observation lounge and really loved it. They serve a light buffet here at mealtimes, and if you want a big meal, just head up one flight of stairs to the ship's big buffet restaurant, which also has fantastic views out big picture windows and is another great place to sit and enjoy the scenery. The most talked about new feature on Norwegian Bliss is the go-kart race track at the top of the ship. All the cruise lines have a friendly competition, adding fun new attractions to their newest ships. Remember years ago when Royal Caribbean was getting all the attention for adding things like ice skating rinks, and rock climbing walls, and zip lines to their ships. Now it really seems like Norwegian has hit their stride with the innovations on Norwegian Bliss. The go-kart racetrack was a lot of fun. I rode it many times. Even though the go-karts are electric, they're equipped with realistic go-kart sounds that really make them feel like an old-school gas-powered go-kart back in the day. They definitely feel fast and responsive, a lot of fun to drive, and if they went any faster, you'd never make it around the very tight turns on the course. Passing other cars is the ultimate challenge and if you watch the go-karts for a while, you will almost surely witness a crash or two when people try to pass but don't quite get away with it. I think Norwegian scored a big hit with the go-kart racetrack. There is definitely no shortage of things to keep people of all ages entertained. Right next to the go-karts, you'll find a five-hole mini golf course, Inside the ship, there's a bowling alley as well as an arcade. There's a very cool setup for laser tag that simulates two opposing security forces shooting it out inside a space station. And there's also two very cool water slides on the ship. On a lot of cruise ships, the water slides are so basic that they're really only going to appeal to a child. And the Norwegian Bliss does have a children's play area with a very safe and gentle water slide for the little ones. But there are also two very thrilling water slides that are perfect for adults. I had so much fun on these. The first one is very gentle, but still good fun even for adults. You sit on a big inner tube and float down the water slide inside this very colorful tube. You get good speed going and it's just a lot of fun without scaring you. Now the second water slide will definitely scare you. You climb up to the top of the tower, get inside this cylinder, and then get the scare of your life when the floor drops right out from under your feet. When you're dropping down in a free fall, you will have a little moment of panic, I pretty much guarantee it. <laughs> Especially since there's water splashing all around you and you're fighting just to get a breath without breathing in the water. You go out over the side of the ship, then you go upside down for a little while, it just totally throws you for a loop, pardon the pun. 
I love these vertical drop water slides. They've become a standard feature on all of Norwegian's newest ships, and you can ride any of these water slides as many times as you want for as long as you want without ever having to make a reservation or pay any kind of fee. Be sure to try both of these water slides out if you sail on Norwegian Bliss. When I go on vacation, I just love to spend as much time in the water as possible. In port, that means a shore excursion to a beach, spending time in the warm waters of the Caribbean or the tropical part of the Pacific. On board the ship, it can sometimes mean spending time in one of the main swimming pools, but what I really love is when a ship has a good thermal suite within their spa, and Norwegian Bliss definitely has that. That big indoor pool you see here is as warm as a jacuzzi, and I visited here just about every day to relax in the warm water, and then to lie on one of these heated tile loungers, or one of the very comfortable padded loungers, and enjoy the view out the big picture windows. On Norwegian Bliss, the thermal suite is located at the back end of the ship, with fantastic views of what's behind the ship. It was at the front of the ship on previous generations of Norwegian ships, but by moving the spot to the back and freeing up that space in the front, it allowed the designers to create that fantastic observation lounge on Norwegian Bliss. Another smart bit of ship design that Norwegian has done with all of their recent ships, and I'm seeing a lot of other cruise lines copy this now, is extending out the deck directly above the lifeboats. This serves two purposes. First, you cover up the lifeboats so that they're hidden from view from above. When you look down from a balcony cabin up above, you just never see the bright orange lifeboats because they're hidden out of sight. But the other thing that's cool about this is that the extended deck that covers the lifeboats makes a fantastic outdoor dining and viewing area. On Norwegian, they call it the waterfront, and quite a few of the specialty restaurants have outdoor dining on the waterfront. There are also several bars out on the waterfront, and even a little place to buy gelato. Norwegian has been designing the waterfront onto their ships for several years now. MSC realized how brilliant Norwegian's idea was and copied it on their new ship, the MSC Seaside, and they also stole another really great idea that NCL pioneered years ago, the Haven, a private VIP area within the ship that's only accessible to a small group of passengers who pay at least two or three times the price of a regular cruise in order to have an uncrowded, luxurious, pampered experience in a private section of the ship. With the Bliss being a brand new ship and our Panama Canal cruise being 15 days, NCL was getting big bucks for suites within the Haven on this cruise, so I just couldn't afford the Haven this time around, and I booked a spa mini suite instead to at least have access to that great thermal suite within the spa whenever I wanted to get away from it all. But I did get a tour of the Haven on Norwegian Bliss, and I've stayed within the Haven on other Norwegian ships. I was really impressed with the design of the Haven on Norwegian Bliss and the improvements that they've made over previous generations. I also really like what they did with the adults only sun deck area at the back of the ship. They call this Spice H2O. What they improved in this area on this generation of ships is that they added a nicer water feature. It can get warm back here, lying on a lounger in the sun. When you get too hot, just take a walk through the water feature. It's the adult equivalent of how we used to run through the sprinklers on the front lawn when we were kids. I mentioned MSC Seaside a little earlier. I sailed on that ship a few months before my cruise on Norwegian Bliss. Comparing the two ships, MSC compares quite poorly as far as I'm concerned. My cruise on Norwegian Bliss has been pretty much one of the best cruises I've ever been on. MSC Seaside, eh, not so much. MSC is very much geared towards the preferences of European passengers. Norwegian is fantastic about gearing things towards American tastes. It's especially evident in the areas of food and dining, and also in entertainment. Let's start with the entertainment. It seemed to me that MSC made a conscious decision to keep their costs low as far as the entertainment went. 
on Norwegian Bliss, I was so impressed to see how much money and effort Norwegian had spent on offering all sorts of entertainment. There was a huge variety of entertainment offered during our cruise, and nothing about it struck me as being done on the cheap. There were three big musical production shows on board. I actually only made it to one of them, Jersey Boys, which traces the career of Frankie Valli and the Four Seasons. It was like seeing a show on Broadway. The show ran an hour and 40 minutes, and while I don't really think of myself as a huge fan of Frankie Valli, when I was in that theater and one song after another was a huge hit that I had grown up listening to back in the day, well, it's just a great musical production show for anyone over the age of 50. There was a fantastic soul Motown kind of act called Uptown that was so good I actually went to see them twice. And there was a headliner musical show featuring Janine Carmiello, a singer who performed music from a wide variety of genres. Once again, I enjoyed her show so much that I went back to see her again on a second night. They had a Beatles tribute band called the Bliss Beatles that performed throughout the cruise in the Cavern Club, an intimate little venue styled after the real thing in Liverpool. As you might expect, the 20-somethings weren't really into it, but the baby boomers had a great time. There was a lot of stand-up comedy throughout the cruise. MSC should follow Norwegian's example here. This was so much better than the improv comedy I saw on MSC Seaside. One of the comedians was this singer, Alison Weber, who was really funny, and I got a real kick out of her shows. She's kind of a female version of Weird Al, doing parodies of pop songs. Super creative, original stuff. I loved it and she was only one of many comedians on board. Like I said, Norwegian does not skimp on the entertainment. I was so excited to see a pretty good country music band performing on board. You almost never hear country music on a cruise ship. I think it was a great idea to include it on Norwegian Bliss. Like almost every other cruise ship I've ever been on, there was a Filipino cover band, but unlike a lot of cruise ships, these guys were only one of many musical acts on board, and also, they were really good. I really loved that Norwegian offered such a big variety of entertainment, so much that I didn't even get video of some of them, like the comedian Hypnotist, the big Cuban-inspired musical production show, and the musical based on speakeasies from the Prohibition era. They had late-night parties out on the main pool deck, as well as at the back of the ship in Spice H2O, which is what you're looking at here. And there were all sorts of game shows in the main atrium, both during the day and at night. This one we're looking at here was a comedic takeoff on Dancing with the Stars called Ultimate Dance Clash, and it was really creative and really funny. You know, a lot of these goofy shows you see on cruise ships, like the Newlywed Not So Newlywed game, have been performed on cruise ships for decades now, but this one looked original to me. I was really impressed with it and all the entertainment on board. Now let's talk about the food, another area where MSC Seaside performed poorly in that cruise that I took with them a few months before my cruise on Norwegian Bliss. From my past cruises with Norwegian, I knew that I was going to enjoy the food on Norwegian Bliss, and it was even better than I expected. This was practically a perfect match for my tastes in food. And my wife seemed to enjoy the food much better on this cruise than some of our other cruises. A big strength for NCL is the variety of specialty restaurants that they offer. We didn't eat at all of them, only the ones that matched up with our taste in food, like Q, the new Texas Smokehouse. This was some delicious barbecue. If you're a meat eater, you like barbecue, you're going to love Q. And after dining hours, it's where the country music band performs, but I really think they need to offer some food while the country music band performs. Los Lobos is a Mexican restaurant that takes over the space that on the previous generation of ships had a Brazilian steakhouse in it. I love Mexican food and I loved my meal at Los Lobos. My suggestion to NCL on the subject of Mexican food is that they should offer much more of it in the buffet. 
I don't think NCO realizes how big of a deal Mexican food is to people in the United States. But Los Lobos is at least a step in the right direction. We had a fantastic dinner at Cagney's, the classic steakhouse, and it is definitely the most popular of all the specialty restaurants on board. Make your reservations from home before you get on board the ship, unless you want to end up eating your meal at Cagney's at a very late hour like 9 p.m. We also ate at La Cucina, the Italian restaurant, and had a fun lunch at Jimmy Buffett's Margaritaville restaurant, where my advice is, order the Volcano Nachos. When we booked our cruise, they were running a special promotion where we got our choice of two perks. We chose the dining package so that our dinners in the specialty restaurants wouldn't cost a thing. And we also got the beverage package, so we had a lot of fun trying different cocktails throughout the cruise. I always have my wife with me on our cruises, and this time I also had one of my sisters with me, and she is a lot of fun. Having the beverage package only enhanced that, and I love that having unlimited adult beverages all cruise long didn't cost us an arm and a leg like it would have on many other cruise lines. Now, if you've read some of my previous cruise reviews on my website at jimzim.net, you know that my wife and I tend to eat a lot of our meals in the buffet when we're on a cruise. The specialty restaurants and the main dining room were so good on Norwegian Bliss that we ate a lot less buffet meals than we usually do. But I've got to tell you that one of the best surprises on Norwegian Bliss for me was how good the breakfast buffet was. I love a good omelet for breakfast with potatoes, a croissant if I can get it, and some crispy bacon. And on Norwegian Bliss, it was the best breakfast buffet I had ever experienced in all 44 of my cruises. Just before the cruise, I bought a new laptop for video editing with a solid-state hard drive, but I didn't really expect to be able to upload videos from the ship. Cruise ship internet is usually just too slow to upload gigantic video files. But wow, was I surprised! After I upgraded to the most expensive internet plan that they offered on Norwegian Bliss, they had a ton of bandwidth. I uploaded videos faster on the ship than I ever could have at home. Really? It was amazing how far they've raised the technology bar on this ship. Boarding the ship in Miami was totally painless, a very smooth process. And as we sailed out of the port of Miami, we got a look at the new terminal that Royal Caribbean is constructing. But big news, Norwegian is also having a new terminal built for them in Miami, right next door to this Royal Caribbean terminal. And the new Norwegian terminal is going to be a state-of-the-art, $100 million terminal that should be ready in time for the newest Norwegian ship, Norwegian Encore coming in the fall of 2019. Disembarkation in Los Angeles at the end of our cruise was ridiculously fast. I have no video of it, so we're just going to have to go with this shot for a minute. We did self-assist disembarkation, and I can only guess that everybody else must not have because we practically had the gangway to ourselves as we walked off the ship in L.A. No review of our cruise would be complete without mentioning the fact that this was a Panama Canal cruise and our very first time through the canal. Since the Norwegian Bliss is the ninth largest cruise ship in the world and it was way too big to fit through the old locks, we got to go through the new section of the canal, which just opened up two years ago after a huge nine-year expansion project that cost billions of dollars. It was truly the highlight of the cruise, the day we spent crossing from the Caribbean to the Pacific Ocean via the Panama Canal. If you like cruising, you're fascinated by cruise ships like I am, you really have to do a Panama Canal cruise sometime, and an Alaska cruise too. And Norwegian Bliss is the perfect cruise ship for either one. They even opened up the crew-only area at the bow of the ship the day we went through the Panama Canal. It was crowded with passengers up there, but I got a kick out of having access to an area of the ship that passengers usually never set foot on. Another cool thing about a Panama Canal cruise is the amount of wildlife you see. 
my wife and I have a thing about macaws. We got to see free-flying macaws, not in cages, on three different occasions during our cruise. And when the ship got into the general vicinity of Acapulco, we saw a ton of green sea turtles, maybe a hundred of them, over a period of a day or two at sea. So it was a great cruise on Norwegian Bliss. I really think that this is one of the best cruise ships in the world, one you should definitely make a point to sail on. Of course, there were a few things that I think NCL could improve upon, and I'll list those in my full review on my website at jimzim.net, where you can read a lot more about Norwegian Bliss and all the other cruise ships I've been on and see some nice still photos that I took during my cruise.